In the last video, we talked about how certain molecules can be used as preservatives to prevent oils from going rancid. They did that by offering the molecular oxygen, dye radical, a more attractive position to attack, a more attractive hydrogen to rip off, where a radical can be left, could be left behind that was more resonance stabilized. If you take that same context, and instead of adding it to foods to preserve them, you put it in the human body to prevent oxygen from ripping tissues apart, well then, you have antioxidants. We've been talking about radicals for this whole chapter. The radicals that occur in your body are called free radicals, and they're most often oxygen. Inhale. And hundreds of trillions of oxygen molecules vibrate their way through the caverns of your nose. One red blood cell can carry up around a billion oxygen molecules. And you have around 25 trillion red blood cells in your body right now. Every second, your body makes two, around 2 million new red blood cells. And 2 million of your red blood cells die. So one of the reasons why your feces is brown and your urine is yellow is the waste products that are, are created when your body breaks down all those red blood cells. So when you inhale, you breathe in these unfathomable amounts of oxygen radicals and they flood your tissues. You have oxygen that your body has sort of made a Faustian bargain with. It's this very reactive molecule. And so it can use that reactive molecule to get a lot of energy. After all, a synonym for very reactive is very energetic. So these radicals, because they're so reactive, the same thing that makes them so reactive makes cells capable of getting a lot of energy from them. And so if you know from a biology class, aerobic respiration. That's, resp that's how cells make energy in the presence of oxygen gives you so much more energy than anaerobic respiration. That's where cells try to make energy in the absence of oxygen. So because oxygen is this really reactive radical, it's able to allow cells to make much more energy from it. And that allows the cells to grow and to be more competitive. But the problem is that if you're going to have oxygen, sure, it's very, you can get a lot of energy from it. But at the same time, the fact that it's so reactive means that it can start reacting with things you don't want it to. As it travels to your mitochondria to do this aerobic respiration, it can rip atoms off of other molecules that you want undisturbed. It can rip atoms off of the collagen that keeps your skin firm, that protein. It can rip atoms off of DNA and give you mutations. And so the oxygen radicals that you need in your body in order to get energy, those same oxygen radicals can harm your tissues as they're being transported to your mitochondria to make that energy. And the, one of the, mecha, the, the strategies that your body uses to cope with that and to prevent damage from happening to your, to your cells and their structures as oxygen gets transported to the mitochondria is to flood your cells with molecules that will prevent the oxygen from adding on to things. When the oxygen adds on to things, it oxidizes them. And so it's acting as an oxidant. These molecules that will prevent oxygen from adding on to stuff are called antioxidants. They're preventing oxygen from adding on to molecules, antioxidants. They are neutralizing the radicals in your body, those free radicals. And the way they do it is very similar to the way that preservatives do it that we saw in the last video. They offer a, an attractive place for an, the oxygen radicals to, to, um, to react. A more attractive place than the oxygen radical would find in any other molecule, say, in DNA or in a protein that your body needs. 
what you'll notice is that you have pi bonds here, and they're conjugated. So you have parallel p orbitals on these two atoms, that's creating the second bond there, and then you also have parallel p orbitals on these two atoms, that's creating the second pi bond there. All of these p orbitals are parallel, and so electrons are able to fly through all of them. Now, if you had a p orbital on an allylic position, an atom that's one atom away, from the atom from the atom in a double bond so for example on this oxygen here or this oxygen here then whatever electrons are in that p orbital they could spread out over all five of these atoms the four that are, have the p orbitals drawn in but also the fifth where the radical would be so for example, I'm going to redraw this hydrogen here. This oxygen next to the hydrogen I'm erasing, that oxygen is on an allylic position. It's one atom away from an atom in a double bond. So if you had an oxygen radical, and sort of the theme music from Jaws would be playing as this travels through your tissues, searching for something to rip an electron from, to rip an to an atom off of and one of its electrons from in order to stabilize the radical, well then it bumps into, if you have vitamin C or another antioxidant, and the antioxidants tend to come from fruits and vegetables. But if it runs into an antioxidant, it rips off a hydrogen from the antioxidant instead of from one of the the molecules that are important for, how, for making your cell function. So this donates one electron, this hydrogen donates another, the other electron in this bond goes onto the oxygen, which is the allylic position here. And so after that step, you have this oxygen. It still has one radical on one end. It has a bond to the hydrogen on the other. And then you have the vitamin C molecule. And we form a radical on that oxygen, on that allylic position. So the p orbital that this radical exists in is parallel to the p orbitals on those pi bonds. And so the radical is able to spread out through all five of these atoms and be stabilized. That means it's not as reactive. So it starts out as a really reactive radical. Here it's not as reactive, and so it won't rip your tissues apart. And notice the other feature of this vitamin C that's brilliant. Look at how many oxygens there are. There are so many charges here, partial charges. Everything the oxygen is bonded to is slightly positive. And the oxygens themselves are slightly negative. This is such a polar molecule. It has all of these positive and negative poles on it. And so it will really mix with well with water, which is also really polar. All of the slightly positive charges in vitamin C will be attracted to the slightly negative oxygen of water, and all of the slightly negative charges on vitamin C will be attracted to the slightly positive charges of water, and so vitamin C mixes with water very well. And that allows you to excrete vitamin C very well. If you ever take a huge dose of vitamin C, you'll see that like an hour later, your urine will be a bright yellow color. It's all the vitamin C you ingested. You're just peeing it out. It follows the water. If there's ever excess of it, it just follows the paths of water in your body. And so if this, is a, if this has become a radical, if this acted as an antioxidant to stabilize another radical and become a radical itself, but a radical that was stabilized through resonance over many atoms, well, even then, even though it's not very reactive, your body can still get rid of it by peeing it out because it's so water-soluble. Now, you might wonder, what happens to this? I mean, this still has a radical here. It doesn't seem like we stabilized it that much. But that's because we only did this once with one vitamin C molecule. 
If you add another vitamin C molecule, it would stable the other, stabilize the other end of this. So you'd do this reaction again and put a hydrogen on the other radical. And then this would break apart. That's a peroxide after all. And you would get two hydroxide radicals. Now you don't have to draw the mechanism for this full for the full production of this this oxygen in uh, on a test. What you do have to do on a test is show molecular oxygen stealing a hydrogen from the allylic position of any um, antioxidant. And you, so you'll look you'll recognize an antioxidant because it will have conjugated pi bonds, alternating double and single bonds. You'll look for the allylic position on it and you'll have draw molecular oxygen stealing a hydrogen from that position and creating a radical there. And then you'll want to explain how that radical is spread out through resonance over all of the atoms that have a pi bond. And so the antioxidant turns the unstable oxygen radical into a stable antioxidant radical, an antioxidant radical stabilized through resonance. But ultimately, these radicals react yet again with another antioxidant, so another vitamin C here, to steal another hydrogen, and they both turn into waters. So you get two waters, ultimately, from this oxygen. But what you would want to be able to draw is all of this here. Now, you won't have vitamin C on the test. It will be a different antioxidant. But you're looking for alternating double and single bonds. Look, at the, look for the allylic position that has a hydrogen on it. And then do the hydrogen abstraction with oxygen there and draw the products and explain, crucially. Uh, here I'm doing it with my voice, but you would want to write it down. Explain how transferring the radical from the oxygen to the antioxidant stabilizes it through resonance. Now, there are a couple interesting applications of this. Um, the, the more, first of all, this explain, this is one of the explanations for why people who eat a lot of fruits and vegetables tend to age a little bit or seem to age a little bit more slowly. If you, you have so many oxygen molecules perfusing through your, your tissues, and if there are not antioxidants in your body, in your tissues, to stabilize them, then they're going to rip your tissues apart. One of the things they can rip apart is collagen. That's the most common protein in your body. 60% of all the proteins in your body are collagen. And that's what keeps your skin firm. So if you don't have antioxidants to protect that, then the radicals that you inhale will react with collagen and your skin will stop being as firm. It will, it'll start to sag. This is another reason why if you don't eat fruits and vegetables, you tend to get sick. You tend to get colds more often. And why when you have a cold, you take vitamin C and other antioxidants. If you don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, then you don't have these antioxidants, and the oxygen that you inhale is constantly creating havoc in your cells. It's ripping apart molecules that need to stay together. So your immune system is constantly running around and trying to fix those molecules or destroy the cells that have become cancerous because oxygen reacted with the DNA in them. So your immune system is busy putting out the fire that these radicals cause if you don't, take, if you don't have these antioxidants, if you don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Your immune system is busy, busy stabilizing all the radicals that form in your body, and so it has less capacity to attack microbes. So the microbes that get into your bloodstream or into your body, through your mouth, through your eyes, on your hands, those microbes are able to grow and feed off of you and therefore make you sick because your immune system is so busy doing other things, stabilizing these radicals. And that's why if you are sick, you take a whole bunch of vitamin C or you make sure you eat, like, you drink orange juice or you, that has all these antioxidants in it so that your body, your immune system doesn't have to worry about stabilizing radicals anymore. It can start focusing on attacking microbes. One last interesting application of this is exercise, especially aerobic exercise. That's the exercise where you like breathe really heavy and you pant, like when you go running or 
bicycling, you break a sweat. In those types of exercise, you gulp in huge breaths of oxygen over and over again for an extended period of time. In other words, the amount of radicals in you, that enter your body during exercise is enormous. Now, by itself, that would be a bad thing. If all you did all day, every day was exercise, you would die younger than if you didn't exercise. But the reason why exercise is helpful and would help you survive longer and age more slowly is not exercise all by itself, which involves taking a lot of radicals into your body and is, can be very dangerous. What, the, what, the reason why exercise is so profoundly healthy is when you combine it with rest. So if you do intense exercise, make sure you take at least a day afterwards to rest. What happens is when you do intense exercise, your body says, oh my gosh, there were so many radicals here right now. That was a very traumatic experience. I have to build up molecules that can handle dealing with that many radicals. And so it does, but it only can do that if you rest. And if you rest, then the exercise will make your body, just like if you, if you force your body to lift heavy weights, your muscles will get larger so that they can be prepared to lift heavy weights. And as you go through your daily life, carrying other things is so easy and less stressful. So likewise, if you do aerobic exercise, you breathe all these radicals in, your body has, says, oh my gosh, I have to prepare for all these radicals. So it has all these different, it builds all these different proteins to, to break radicals down. In, and, and so it's ready for those intense oxidation periods where you're gulping huge ox breaths of oxygen in. And the day-to-day -day life, where you just breathe normally, it can handle that so easily. It's able to neutralize those radicals so quickly and so easily. And so just day-to-day -day living ends up doing less damage to your body because your body has become prepared for those acute periods where you're breathing in huge amounts of radicals. Nonetheless, it helps if you exercise to also eat lots of fruits and vegetables so that when you do ingest all of those radicals, when you do breathe in all that oxygen, you have a mechanism in your body to stabilize those radicals so that they don't do damage even during that acute period. So one other lesson that you should take away from this is that exercise is healthy. Aerobic exercise is most beneficial when you rest afterwards. So chronic or addict, people who are addicted to aerobic or exercise, who never stop, who never take a day off, those people are just adding lots and lots of radicals into their body that could do damage. Their body never has the chance to build up coping mechanisms to respond to those. But if you do rest, then your body will be prepared for huge amounts of radicals, and the day-to-day -day living you do won't cause as much damage as somebody who doesn't exercise. So in this video, we showed how antioxidants work, and we talked about some applications of them. Antioxidants work by giving oxygen radicals an attractive place to attack, a, pla a place that's allylic to conjugated pi bonds. So if the oxygen radical attacks there, you create a very stabilized radical. So antioxidants donate one electron to an unstable radical and become a stable radical. And oftentimes, they become a stable radical that you can easily pee out. And that helps to reduce the oxidative stress in your body. That helps to reduce the amount of damage that oxygen does as it makes its way from your lungs to your mitochondria, where you can use the reactivity of the oxygen to make a whole bunch of energy, the energy that you've been using to listen to this video right now.